Oh, hello, Lifecycle Insights users. This is Alex with Lifecycle Insights. And in this brief video, we're going to talk through assessment items in Lifecycle Insights. We're going to compare the most commonly used types of assessment items, and we're going to show you some tips and tricks in how to fill them out. So let's dive in. Now, what you should see on my screen is the dashboard for Lifecycle Insights. And since we're working in assessments, we're going to click assessments down here on the left hand side. And then we're going to go look at assessment items. So there's two pretty common uh, assessment item types, and you'll see them right here at the top of my item bank. So right here, I've got a short assessment uh, item and a long assessment item. Now, normally speaking, if we have a short assessment item, we're going to have a long answer. So you can see over here, the answer is very long. It's very descriptive, and we get to dive into exactly what's happening in the organization and how they're using that assessment item in their day-to-day -day deployment. This is a more flexible way to ask and answer questions that you really want to assess the uh, the organization on. The other is a long assessment item. These are more often found in NIST and CIS and PCI compliance, HIPAA compliance, all of the, the really well-defined standards. Typically, when you have a long assessment item, you have a short assessment response. The responses are typically yes, no, uh, partially deployed, implemented or not implemented, um, something like that. You know, they're very, very, very descriptive, very definitive. You see these uh, typically when you're dealing with uh, specific compliance obligations. Typically, the long assessment items are built for you. Short assessment items are the ones that are either in a Lifecycle Insights branded template or something that you're going to bring into the uh, to the uh, to the platform yourself and something that you're going to work on inside the platform. So what I'd like to show you now is, is what a short assessment item looks like. These are what most of our partners are working with. So a short assessment item, in this case, it's remote access policy. You'll see here we have a few global responses. So either it's not applicable, there is no remote access policy in the organization because there is no remote access, something like that. Um, an unknown item, which is more information needed. And this is the, the situation where uh, we just don't have enough information to answer the question. We're going to flag this to come back to later with the uh, with the end user or the customer. Then we have the, uh, the, the unsatisfactory answer, which is uh, remote access is in use, but the organization doesn't have a defined policy uh, to govern access and, and what's allowed to be accessed. Then we have a, a needs attention. This is this is unacceptable, but a little less critical. Um, the organization has a remote access policy, policy, but it hasn't been shared with IT in policies and procedures. Us as IT people, we can't be expected to help an organization enforce their policy if we don't have a copy of that policy and, and are able to share it with our team. Um, we have an, a non-applicable, non or I'm sorry, an acceptable risk answer here in blue. The customer understands the, uh, the issue and accepts the risk for not deploying a remote access policy. So they understand that they need one. They're just not willing to put in the time and energy. And then finally, we have our acceptable uh, answer, our, our satisfactory answer. The organization has a policy. It outlines the requirements for, for the data that's being accessed, and it's probably been shared with IT. We probably want to edit that and include... Um, and the policy has been shared with IT. And that's how easy it is to edit uh, a response, that even one that's already in use. So now that response will be available anytime that we go to use this inside the tool. Um, so you'll see here we can actually add a global response. So if you add a global response, you choose whether it's applicable or not, uh, whether it's unknown, whether it's at risk, needs attention, acceptable risk, etc. So we might have a uh, another um, not applicable policy here, and you could you could type out here that um, does not apply, remote access access is not available. Because this is a global response because we're, we're editing at the at the item level they're all going to be global this is going to be accessible on any any time that i answer uh this is this question on any of my assessment templates so when i save it you'll see this bump right over here now we have a does not apply uh answer that is a not applicable answer there's two really important fields here in every risk assessment item that i want to talk about because these two fields um, specifically are not in use in every assessment that you're going to import in your MSP because they're custom to your MSP. So the first is scoring instructions. The second is explanation remediation. And in just a second, I'm gonna bring a slide up on the screen. Um, we're gonna go ahead and, and also link that slide in the notes to this video so that you have it to download. But this slide really talks through exactly how to fill out and customize and make 
a, a risk assessment item your own. The biggest part of that is going ahead and filling in scoring instructions and explanation remediation. So let's look at those two and see what they really are. Um, scoring instructions. This is how do we know whether to answer this red, yellow, green, uh, blue, gray? Uh, how do I know which answer to pick? The, the reason that we want you to fill in scoring instructions is because the end goal of our platform is to be able to take things like answering basic risk assessment questions and hand them down to, uh, to not the most expensive resource in your organization so that some of this work can be delegated to a less expensive resource or a less experienced resource. You know, this is the whole, um, we've, we've got to get the owner, we've got to get the VCIO out of having to do all of the work for every QBR. The best way to do that is to go ahead and fill out some, some scoring instructions that say, hey, go ahead and mark this green if such and such uh, situation exists at the client. You can spell out as much detail as you want here. You can even put sample comments in here for if you mark it yellow or red, hey, here's some reusable comments that you can make to explain to the customer what remediation looks like. Typically, those comments will land down here in explanation remediation and we'll be able to say, hey, if we mark this anything other than green, what does it look like to uh, to fix it? So you can see here uh, in this per in this example, my scoring instructions go to SharePoint. Your scoring instructions may go to IT Glue, a document and a process document over there. If you have documentation on how to do certain things in another tool, you probably shouldn't recreate that documentation here. Go ahead and forward from our tool link back into the tool that you would normally use. And you see here, you can create scoring instructions with, you know, full bold text or, you know, formatted text. You can insert links, you can insert images, you can insert pictures. If, you, if you're telling someone to answer this question, go look at a report from XYZ scanning tool, go to page 45, look, at the, look for a section that looks like this, and here's where you'll find the answer. You can put all of that information into scoring instructions. Um, but I, I really recommend that if you use IT Glue, if you use Hoodoo, if you use something like that, go ahead and move your scoring instructions back there so that you're not having to maintain them in our tool and back where your engineers do work. And a perfect, perfect example of this is a firewall. If you wanted to, uh, to tell your engineers, hey, um, you know, if I, I, I know if my IPS IDS is configured in my firewall by checking this document over here, right? And then you link back to the document that says, hey, we're a FortiGate shop and a FortiGate firewall. Log in, click here, go here, do these next two or three things. And this is how you decide whether or not IPS IDS is configured correctly. Well, your engineers are going to support that documentation. They're going to keep it up so that a new engineer, when they come in, can get up to speed quickly. You want your account managers and whoever's filling in this information to have access to that exact same information. But they might get additional information in the scoring instructions field. So let's flip over to our slide and talk about what that looks like. You can see here, we're actually talking about um, our, our assessment item is a UTM security appliance. Um, we've created some custom global responses. Those are all done. You can add some more here. You see, we don't have any grays here. So we might come in and add an, an unknown or a not applicable for a shop that, uh, that, that is everyone's a work from home and they don't have a UTM in their environment or something like that. Uh, but then as we get into scoring instructions, these are the most important ones. And you see, I've marked um, the, the, the initial scoring instructions with how do we know that we're winning? How do we know that we can mark this green? Well, we mark it green if they have my firewall of religion installed in their environment, it's under current maintenance um, and, and it's being monitored for, for security changes, right? So we've got a bunch of a bunch of things here. We might have a link here that says, hey, go go here in IT Glue and make sure that we have the right UTM installed. We could go ahead and link that here. Um, we're gonna mark it yellow if uh, the device is installed, but it doesn't meet some other conditions, right? And we could have links in here as well um, go here to check the licensing, go here to check something else. And then market red if the customer doesn't have my favorite firewall of religion. But that leaves us in a spot where now that we've marked it red or yellow, what are we going to do about it? Well, that's where explanation remediation comes in. If it's not perfect, how are we going to fix it? Well, this is where if we mark this anything other than green, please add a comment re uh, recommending a project to realign the customer with our best practices, right? We spell that out right here in explanation remediation. This should this should be bringing you to a point where you can see how someone who's not the smartest person in your MSP can now start to answer some of these questions that that hero with a, or, or a hero with a thousand followers or genius with a thousand followers, as we call it. Um, you know, if you've got that that one guy in your MSP who has to do all of this work, 
Let's try and get some of that knowledge out of their brain and get it into these tools so that now we can delegate this process. Because now we know um, if we had to mark this red or yellow, we know exactly how to go ahead and price it. We price it according to um, if a new firewall is, is, is required, the project's billable. If the current firewall needs to be uh, reconfigured, then uh, and the customer has an all you can eat agreement, it's probably just included. Um, you know, and then we have some notes here, you know when you're sizing the firewall, make sure you check with the right person to make sure you're quoting the right product. You can have pages and pages of detail here. You can have links, you can have, uh, you know, a, a, some sample uh, comments that you could copy and paste right out of here back into the comments section. And we'll touch on comments in a future video, uh, but you could have comments here, a, a series of comments that you could copy and paste back in and say, hey, if, if we found this scenario, go ahead and paste this comment uh, in, in the recommendation. So, you know, if, uh, if a new firewall is required, go ahead and recommend to the customer in the comments that we undertake a billable project to, to remediate the, the deficiency that we found when we were answering this assessment question. So I hope this helps you guys understand how assessment questions are built, assessment items are built. Uh, we'll step into actually scoring them and, uh, and um, using them on the risk assessment in a future video. Thank you very much. And if you have questions or uh, additional comments, don't hesitate to uh, click the blue help button in the bottom right hand corner and contact Lifecycle Insights support, or you can send an email directly to support at lifecycleinsights.io. Thanks and happy life.